Hi, my name is Steve House. Today I'm gonna to walk you through what I put in my backpack for a one night overnight alpine climb. I'm not gonna talk about clothing and the gear that's out like ropes and crampons and tools. I'm just gonna talk about what's in my pack. So I'm gonna start actually with the food. So the first sort of meal of the, of the climb would be lunch, which of course starts right after breakfast, right? So for any kind of alpine climb, I pretty much rely on energy food. My favorite energy food right now are the Goose Droop Waffles, or they're light, they're just over an ounce, it's 150 calories, very palatable, stays soft when it's cold, there's a bunch of different good flavors, um, sweet and savory, really liking those. So I'll typically uh, count on about five of those, so that's about 750 calories, and plus gels for when I need that more on-the-go uh, energy, which are about 100 calories. I use a variety of gels, some caffeinated, some not caffeinated. Uh, I'll have a selection, I'll just take what I need depending on how I'm feeling at the time. I will also take some chews, uh, the Goo Chews or, are, are great. They're, they're a little more speedy than a lot of other um, like the energy foods here, the so it's for me it's more something have something intensely sweet that just tastes good and that I can share with my partners. I can nibble at at the belay while I'm passing time, that kind of thing. But my main um, mainly I'm relying on the stroop waffles and the gels. Uh, water wise, for I'm I'm typically starting off with now with two soft flasks. These are the ones I've been using, they're 600 milliliters, so it gives me a slightly over a liter. I try to limit the amount of water I'm carrying to around a liter. Um, more than that, it just gets really heavy. If it's really cold below somewhere between 0 or 10 degrees Fahrenheit, I go to a thermos. But a lot of times I can keep these from freezing by having one inside my jacket somewhere, or I'll, take, or I'll use my spare mitten um, as, a, as, a, uh, as a kind of a way to insulate that and they start off being hot in the morning, hopefully. So, um, in my water, uh, I have typically some dilute electrolyte and or sugar um, in there. I don't like to have too much sugar in my drink because, and by sugar I mean uh, a, a drink mix um, like, like a Roctane uh, Ultra Endurance drink like the Goo Mix. Um, I want my water to be just more liquid. I don't like having, I like my blood sugar to try to stay even as possible. So when I get to uh, the bivy, food wise, the first thing I often do is pull out a bag of nuts. And this is typically almonds or cashews and, and raisins. And this is to start that recovery process, get some calories on board. I've got protein, I've got fat here. It's something that tastes good, it's easy to share. It, doesn't, it tastes good when it's cold, can't freeze it. Um, and so that's, that's been something I've been doing for a long time and that works really great. I think that's really a really great way to start the, the recovery process as soon as you get to the bivy, before you even started to make the site or, or get organized, you can start chowing on some nuts. The other things I have, um, I really like these little recovery drinks. There's 10 grams of protein in here, so I'll get this down when I can, usually before dinner. And then I also have, for uh, hydration, just some kind of, uh, this is a, a Roctane Energy drink mix that's got a, a lot of carbohydrates in it, and as well as a lot of electrolytes and amino acids. So that's good for my recovery. It tastes good, sweet, savory. Uh, a lot of people like to use tea as well, herbal teas, whatever. Um, that's fine. I don't. I try not to do much heating of water because I'm trying to minimize the amount of fuel I use and therefore the amount of fuel I have to carry. For food, I'm pretty much going with freeze dried dinners. If I can, if I have, if I'm not going super super light, of one per person. Um, that that gives me 800 calories here. Plus, I might throw in a little chunk of butter or some olive oil to go with that. I can put the boiling water in the package, I can put it inside my jacket and let it you know, sit there for 20 or 30 minutes to, to cook and um, it's the easiest thing to do. Um, there are easier other things like mashed potatoes, instant stuffing, that kind of stuff that works well too but then you got to cook in the pot and I really try to avoid that. For breakfast, uh, of course the most important thing is the uh, Alpine Star coffee, the instant coffee from our friends in Boulder. Um, I go for another 10 grams of protein that I can drink 
it tastes good, it's easy to get down, and then typically a bar that because I want to have something that's like solid for breakfast. And I keep I put this in my pocket in my sleeping bag before I go to sleep so it's warm and ready to go in the morning. Stove-wise, I'm mostly using the, the wind burner these days, uh, except at a really high altitude, so I don't um, where these types of stoves don't get seem to get enough air to work really well. Um, and here I've got, you know, typically I use one of these PZOs and one small lighter, and then I can probably get by with one small canister with two people for one night if I'm really careful. And that's a nice compact uh, package. I do have, here's my little spoon I've cut off, and I do take a windscreen that I've poached from another MSR stove to kind of help protect that. I don't uh, find that hanging stoves are super useful and often just not worth the trouble. Sometimes, in certain situations, like a, more of a big wall scenario, they are, but uh, for most alpine climbing, I'd rather, I've got some sort of little place where I can set the stove and I'd rather have it, have it there. Um, that, the other food things I'll, I'll have, I won't have a whole package, but I'll bring a few, a couple of electrolyte tablets, not a lot, but one or two, and then I'll try to bring some uh, branch chain amino apps, uh, branch chain amino acid capsules uh, to help my recovery that I'll eat with my food at night. I'm not taking the whole thing, I'm just probably have two of those in pocket somewhere. Uh, otherwise, the rest of this stuff, you know, Gloves, I typically carry a pair of mittens that I figure I can always get down if my hands are functioning and I always have a pair of synthetic mittens. Um, this is this would be my quote unquote belay glove, my little bit warmer glove, and then I might have a climbing glove that's, that's out. That's about typical for me, three, sometimes four sets of handwear for a climb. The other thing that's going to be in my pack, a lot of times my hard shell will be in my pack. I might go with a Houdini style jacket in really good weather or if it's not super cold but if it's going to be windy or cold I'll bring an M10 jacket from Patagonia. I mean it's, it's, these, these hard shells are so light compact and the fabric is so breathable now that um, they're working really well. Um, this is the new Hyperpuff uh, Belay Parka that replaces the Patagonia DOS Parka that we've been using for 20 years as long as I've been alpine climbing. And then this other stuff here of course, a pair of sunglasses, some sunscreen to share, a headlamp. Uh, these new headlamps with the big rechargeable batteries are pretty incredible in terms of how long they last. And then navigation, GPS, I've got an altimeter probably on my watch, paper map, I'm a big believer in always having a paper map, and then a Garmin inReach device for sort of emergency communications type thing. So, then over here I have my sleeping bag. This is a 17 degree Patagonia down bag. On a one night climb I will always bring a down bag. On a more than one night, especially if I'm bivouacking uh, on the face, I will almost always bring a synthetic bag. The only multi-day kind of scenario where I'll bring a down bag is like a West Buttress of Denali or something like that where, or you know, chill, climbing chill you by the normal route or something like that where you know you'll have an opportunity to get your bag out on top of the tent or in the tent where it's warm to dry. Um, if you're waking up at 5 o'clock in the morning and stuffing your humid bag into your backpack to start climbing, you, you can only really do that once with down before it's uh, kind of done. Uh, the, these bags are, are super light and super uh, warm. What you don't see here is that, let's see if I can find them, I will put a pair of socks there they are. In the bottom of the bag, I'm gonna, when I get in my bag, I'm gonna switch my socks. I'm gonna take my damp socks off and I'm gonna put them in my clothing, something like this, you know, to dry while I'm sleeping, one on each side, and I'll put the dry socks on. And then when I, in the morning, I'll take those freshly dried socks off and I'll shove them in the bottom of my bag for the next morning. And I'll just keep doing that, sometimes for weeks. When I uh, keep, when I, when I pack my sleeping bag, I pack it right in the bivy sack um, and that way it's easy when I get to the ledge I'm taking out my stuff sack, I don't, it's much easier to manage. I don't put my sleeping bag generally in a compression stuff sack in my backpack. So let's put this all in the pack. Heaviest stuff on the bottom, closest to my body and the stuff that I don't need uh, right away, like the stove, can go down low here on the bottom 
dinner, that kind of stuff. Tomorrow's breakfast. That can all, all go in here. So I'm gonna leave my lunch stuff. That's about half of that. And the rest is gonna go in here. Uh, let's see. Headlamp, which is locked. Sunglasses. And this stuff, emergency stuff, navigation uh, in here. And now I'm going to have my sleeping bag stuff to the bottom of it first. The other thing I didn't show you is my sleeping pad. Let me stop real quick before I get this full. If you look inside the backpack, I've stuffed my, my um, Neo Air mattress. I folded it up and put it in the sleeve that's in the back of the backpack. Because it's in the sleeve, it's protected from getting um, punctured. I've never had a problem so far, knock on wood, with that and it keeps it out of the way, and I almost forget about it. As you can tell, almost forgot to show you. The other thing I have here that I wanted to show you is a tarp. This is something I very commonly take for a, uh, a bivouac. This is four feet by eight feet, just a really lightweight fabric that I can string it up over my head and my, my partner's head where we're bivouacking to keep the spin drift off, keep the wind off, has a lot of functions. Whether or not you have this in stuff sack or not, kind of is up to you. A lot of times stuff is a lot sim simpler to stuff into nooks and crannies in your backpack and fill up all the available space if it's not in a stuff sack. So you can see I've still got some room here. I'm about Halfway, get a couple food items there. I'll put the parka in now. This is a 30 liter backpack. This is a 30 liter Ascensionist backpack. I had the, the pleasure of helping to develop this pack, so that's pretty much exactly how I like it. Pretend my my water is really just air in there at the moment. Let's see, and then I might have my lunch. It's going to be a little distributed in my pockets and so forth, but I'll just shove it in here for now. And there we go. There's a, a backpack. Of course, I don't have the climbing gear in there. Um, I could fit a little bit in there because I do have some softness, especially here at the top, where I could fit a harness, I could get a pair of crampons on top here. I'd probably carry the rope across the top here to get to the base of the root. But um, once I'm climbing, the smaller my backpack, the lighter, obviously, the easier it is to climb. So there you go, a one night overnight backpack for alpine climbing. Thanks for watching.